Star Citizen Alpha 3.15 is now in the first wave of its PTU, so Evocati have access, but also Concierge and RSI subscribers have been added to the stack, and we can talk about the patch now. I want to dive into the patch notes, because there's a load of stuff with the medical mechanics and inventory stuff that I want to talk about, but I'll do some highlights of the patch first and some important pieces of information. You lose your equipment when you die, so anything that you have equipped upon your character with the new inventory system, you'll lose when you die. So um, this can be pledge store items and subscriber items, rare gear, weapons, anything equipped. Bought and subbed items are not permanently removed from your account though. So you'd have to be like, oh, that, that's a bit unfair. Um, they will be reset next quarter. So you'll get them back next major patch. And um, you can also do a character reset if you need them back. But this is only a temporary solution. Clan Imperium are working on something to be able to reclaim or ensure your rarer loots in the future, but we don't know when that will be. But um, I, I thought that's important to state. You can no longer respawn in a Cutlass Red, but you can still spawn in a Carrack and an 890 Jump. The 400i is a real ship and flyable in this patch. This is the new Constellation competitor, but from Origin. It's a luxury exploration multi-role multi-crew ship, and it's available to buy from $220. Some people have access to it at the moment. Um, I believe I do. I'm not sure exactly who has access to it in First Wave PTU. It is a mystery. Uh, we don't know when it's going to be purchasable in game either, um, but it is flyable in 3.15. However, the Ares, Ion, and Redeemer are not in the initial launch of 3.15. They're going to be in a 3.15.x patch, most likely with the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo in November. When you first spawn in 3.15's PTU, you will need to select a home location. This is where all your ships and items are stored and is your default respawn point. So all your stuff that you might have in your account goes here. Boop. Currently, landing zones share inventories with the low-orbit space stations above the planets, so you'll be able to get your ships off planets more easily and spawn any that are too big for planet side. So, shares inventory, bam, that's nice and easy. Friend options to join party and spawn at their location are disabled until this location has been set. You have to set your home location first. Bear that in mind. Otherwise, people are like, why can't I join my friends? Arena Commander's Broken Moon Map has had a big size increase as well, adding new areas and more cover options, new space assets. It, it, it's, it's huge. There's a load going on there. Scoreboards have been updated too for Arena Commander. This is important if you play those modes and might be quite fun for people that want to do that. Um, they've also updated default joystick profiles for a large range of HOTAS and sticks. Um, I think a lot of people have requested that for a while. Lots of supported now. On Crusader, Orison, the landing zone there, that's expanded with the addition of more shops to expand various services available there. This includes Crusader Industries Showroom, which displays the Hercules Starlifter, the Ares Starfighter, and Mercury Star Runner. Cousin Crow's Custom Crafts Ship Parts Shop um, is also there. It's not going to have its full set uh, of a sort of customization for ships at this stage, so bear that in mind, there's a lot more coming in the future. We also have Providence Surplus for industrial clothing and gear. Port Olisar has also been moved closer to Crusader and in synchronous orbit above Orison. There are now relatively dangerous unmanned missile turret defenses at space stations and ground locations, and we have a nice selection of new infiltrate and defend ground-based missions. So these are new missions at underground facilities to replace the old ones along with several new uh, underground facility locations. So these missions come in five types along with lawful and unlawful variants with more difficult types being unlocked through reputation games from doing um, some of them uh, a few times. So eliminate specific target missions. This mission is the most simple in that player is given a task to kill a specific target. Bam. You don't have to worry about the rest of the AI there. Well, you might have to if they shoot you. Eliminate all. A player must go to a facility and kill all targets that spawn there and you'll see a counter once you've actually entered the facility. Eliminate boss. This is basically an eliminate all mission. Once you've killed all the targets there, a AI boss uh, will spawn. They'll have increased health and they'll have some guards with them as well and you have to kill, kill them to um, complete the mission. Defend. This is the sort of mission I'm actually looking most forward to. Uh, this mission begins with a one minute timer when the player goes down the elevator. Um, they'll then be able to observe friendly AI waiting around. Once the timer finishes, wave one of three begins and a series of enemy AI spawn. The player should work together with friendly AI to take out all of the hostile wave. Once done, 
another minute timer will appear and then you know, you'll have to prepare for wave two and then again for wave three and once you wipe out wave three you'll get uh, all your rewards and money and um, you'll get bonuses based on the amount of friendly ai that are alive after wave three as well collect Missions. So this requires a player to enter an underground facility with instructions of locating and extracting three boxes. You'll be given a reference number or set of reference numbers on the contract manager. And then there's loads of boxes there um, when you go down and you'll have to work out which is the correct boxes. So um, you'll have to sift through a load of them. During the process, enemy AI will spawn, uh, which the player will need to deal with in order to be able to extract the boxes safely. You'll then need to take the appropriate boxes back to the drop-off point. So some of those missions are clearly meant to be done in groups or best done with uh, a person or two with you so that they can cover you while you're doing stuff. But I think that could be quite enjoyable. Hopefully in the near future, in a couple of patches time, we'll see enemy ships assaulting ground locations as well. The Hercules A2 is in the patch with its bombing mechanics. You can access its bomb operator mode. While that's active, it will give players a selection marker by pressing right, alt, and T, and that allows them to define an area where they want a bomb to drop. You'll then get a new UI marker showing you where you should be trying to drop your bomb to hit in the location that you want to drop it in. Um, basically, um, those bombs are not controlled after the launch. The gravity and wind and stuff takes them, so be aware. The explosions are quite big though, so uh, you're probably not going to be missing your target much, just maybe um, injuring friendlies if you do it wrong. The new personal inventory, Tier 0 and Asset Manager app have been added. It's still a work in progress though, and the UI will see many updates. There's lots of tweaks and bug fixes incoming, so bear that in mind. With the implementation of personal inventory, players will now physically store weapons, gadgets, consumables, healing items, and more on their person and in vehicles via backpacks, pockets, and containers. This utilizes the new iCache for persistence, wherever players travel. Inventory is no longer restricted to food and commodities. You now open your inventory up with the I button, boop, uh, and you have tabs um, there that you can use to then move items from uh, local area to um, vehicle to external to personal, um, all, all that sort of jazz. You can drag and drop items to um, other sections of the inventory or onto the floor, and you can drag and drop Weapon mods straight onto your gun and off your gun. Armor, backpacks and clothing typically have their own inventory container and can be opened using the inventory system. Um, placing any of these into a location inventory or into a container will create then a nested inventory. So you could put a backpack in a, in a box or ship or landing zone and all of the loot there is contained within the other container still. So that's pretty cool. All armor and clothing can now be carried, dropped, placed, and left in the world, currently represented in the environment by carryable boxes. While in this state, they can be interacted with using the interaction system and can be equipped by doing so. Backpacks are separate from armor, with larger backpacks being usable on the larger armors. If a player is downed or killed, you can loot them via the interaction menu and take all the items from that player. When a player dies, their body will become lootable by players for all items they had on them at the location of their death for two hours before they then despawn. So you may be able to get your items back if you're quick enough. Uh, any ships or vehicles uh, with an interior um, have an inventory as well, and they can be accessed while you're inside uh, that uh, vehicle or ship. Uh, this is instance to the player in question. When the vehicle is destroyed, a large cargo box will appear next to it to allow any player to loot it. The Nick Nax Asset Manager is a new Mobiglass app designed to keep track of every item or ship a player owns in the universe. You can filter to and find all of your stuff here, basically. Uh, loot Generation Tier 0 has been added, and players will be able to find systemically generated containers, crates, lockers, boxes that all contain loot throughout the world. The content of the boxes is dynamically generated within certain restrictions depending on your location. Let's talk about medical mechanics. This is quite a big subject, so uh, bear with me. Hospitals have been added to landing zones and clinics into space stations where players will be able to respawn, save new spawn locations, heal injuries, and buy medical supplies from these locations. This adds the additional emergency elevator inside landing zone hangars that will transport players directly to the hospital. This first iteration will have hospitals in Orison, New Babbage, Grimhex, and clinics in space stations. If you choose Lawville or Area 18 as your starting location, um, you'll be assigned the nearby space station as you respawn until these hospitals are complete in a future major patch. Players can enter a hospital lobby, reserve a room via check-in system to make use of its medbed, change their respawn location, 
purchase all medical items from the pharmacy shop and use the elevator to enter the floor their assigned room is on. Landing zone hangers have been updated to include an emergency elevator drop-off. If a downed or injured or overdosed player is dragged into the elevator, another player can send them to hospital via the interface outside the elevator. Once in the elevator and the doors closed, the uh, rescued player will wake up in a hospital. There is a complete overhaul of the healing and the actor health systems as well, so um, there's various states and, and things going on here. The incapacitated or downed state. When a player is damaged enough, they will enter an incapacitated state where they can ragdoll, they'll be unable to move or interact, and their vision fades in and out. A time until death is displayed to the player, which once expired leads to their death and respawn at a medical facility. The duration can be shortened by receiving additional damage and by other actor statuses, bleeding, dehydration, etc. Uh, instant death can be caused by receiving a large amount of damage at once. When a player is incapacitated, a button prompt is displayed to trigger a service beacon, so you can go, please create a mission so a player can come and rescue me, is the idea there, but obviously your friends can come and rescue you as well. Um, you can use the appropriate medical pen um, on someone else boop, to get them up, uh, or one of the new medical tools to revive an incapped player as well. When you die, you'll respawn in a medical facility bed. You can set this point by interacting with a medical bed or regen terminal at that facility uh, or area. Um, if this respawn point is unavailable for some reason, you will respawn at your home and default one. Injuries. When your head, torso, arms or legs get injured, um, you will lose health, but you also get that part of the body damaged. Um, healing um, increases your health points. Um, you need these to live, um, but does not affect the location damage or the wear damage of that um, sort of area. And when enough wear is accrued on a body part, you'll gain an injury. There are three tiers of injury which get progressively more severe, um, and eventually you can lose the use of your legs, for example, or be unable to use an arm, uh, or be very, 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 very concussed. Uh, these injuries can be healed by an appropriate facility, uh, with severe wounds only being treatable at hospitals and clinics. But you can use medical tools and drugs to cover up um, temporarily those injuries and effects. Your BDL or blood drug level is important too. Medipens and healing tools add to your drug level as does alcohol. If your drug levels are too high, you will become incapacitated and this will cause you to fall over uh, until your drug levels um, fall and then you can get back up. However, being overdosed does mean that you will be taking damage from being overdosed so you can die in that state. Please be aware. And injury symptoms can be temporarily masked by medical drugs, health can be regenerated, and stunned effects of the overdose state temporarily removed at the cost of accruing um, BDL uh, per dosage. Uh, drugs are more or effective from medical beds, and then a little bit less medical guns, and then medical pens are the least effective um, at dealing with that sort of stuff. So you can get med pens with specific drugs or um, use them in the medigun. Uh, there are new drugs um, that you can purchase. Um, there's Homazol, um, which heals HP, stops bleeding, revives from incapacitated. Um, that's basically the, the old style of med pen. Uh, there's the Roxifen, uh, which is the, an opioid pen. Masks hurt locomotion, prone lock, arms lock, uh, pain grunt. Sound effects apparently are cured with this. Um, well, not cured, but, um, you know, um, covered up. We've got an Adrena pen, which masks reduced stun recovery, reduced impact resistance, uh, force reaction sensitivity, uh, reduced movement speed, increased weapon sway, decreased ADS, and um, aim down sights. We have a Coraco pen, uh, which masks uh, blood vision, muffled audio effects, reduced stamina regen, reduced max stamina, wheezing audio effects, uh, reduced melee force. Uh, a detox pen, which revives an overdosed character, provided they are not in the incapacitated state as well. So sort of overdosed is separate from incapped, uh, but does not exit the overdosed state. Um, so you're still getting damaged for being overdosed, basically. But um, the idea here is that drugs and your blood drug level, the decay rates are doubled um, while you've taken that. So um, it burns it out of you really quickly. Medical gun and multi-tool healing attachments have been added. So you've got a healing beam now with these. Players are able to administer drugs via a healing beam uh, when within five meters of their target. 
yes, that target can also be yourself. Um, you'll be able to use both the medical gun and medi tool um, to display the health and act status information about the character they are pointed at. The back of the display of both shows how much medical ammo is available and either the current target's health or the reason they can't be fired upon. You'll see information about the specific body part that you've pointed at, like the injuries and recommended drugs. Um, you'll also see global health information, including um, health, actor statuses, um, bleeding, um, time until death, any administered drugs, and their remaining time. In the sort of standard basic mode, you can uh, just use the standard medipen type stuff, the healing fluid, as it were, to get people up uh, or to um, get their health back up. In advanced mode, you can actually uh, put a dosage of different drugs, and uh, you can also use the alternate fire to fire it on yourself to heal yourself. Medical beds. Each medical bed has a care facility tier rating 1, 2, or 3, 3 being the best and highest tier, uh, which determines which injuries it can remove and which it cannot. There are interactable screens which show your injuries on your player and what drugs and dosage and stuff like that that you are able to do. If you enter a down state in a landing zone or are admitted via the emergency elevator, you just work it up in a hospital bed and your items are going to be stored in your local inventory there. Sorry, that was a big chunk of medical information to throw at people, but um, it was mostly important. I did uh, compress it down somewhat as well. Uh, ships have updated capacitors so that systems with 0% power will continue to reload, but very slowly, uh, and they rewrote uh, auto gimbal slew rates and uh, smoothness to be more usable. Uh, the Aegis Gladius has now been brought up to gold standards, so if you're flying that around and um, have a look at it, take it down on the planet and have a look at all the little things on it, it it's, it's looking cool. Uh, there are various known issues and bugs that are worth knowing about with this uh, Wave 1 PT as well. Ground vehicles and initial spawn point. If you have a ground vehicle and you want to be able to use it, well, remember that you probably want to choose a location like New Babbage or somewhere where you can actually get your ground vehicles at if you try and spawn them at Area 18, for example, set that as your spawn location. You're going to have a hard time getting your ground vehicles. Um, after a server crash, attempting to reconnect may result in an infinite loading screen and being unable to interact with the menu. Players will need to exit the game and reload after a server crash to fix this. What other ones do we have? Resetting account failed to clear user items. Origin 400i entrance markers are missing. Objective markers and quantum travel nav points are grayed out on the player's HUD. Uh, ships left at outposts disappear if the player logs out and then logs back in, or sometimes just shortly after disembarking the ship. Down players are dropped or bounced or spin out of control when dragged over uneven surfaces and ramps. That's a feature, clearly not a, not a bug. Uh, when collecting minerals and metals with the extraction mode laser, the ship's cargo randomly empties. Assets such as elevators or environmental content will occasionally be missing in the persistent universe. There is a small area with no gravity in the airlock to Grimhex's medical facility. When re-equipping items from a loot box in Zero-G, equipping the torso and arms can cause large amounts of inventory camera shake. Players will disappear if they enter a overdose state when on board a vehicle. That's, that's not great. Weapon projectile trajectories will not behave correctly when shooting from one zone inside a ship to another outside. Heavy armor arms can sort of partially obscure some of the Moby Glass icons. Uh, destroying mission spawned reinforcement type ships does not always trigger the ongoing call to arms mission rewards. Missiles can hit the player's ship um, when they are fired whilst the ship is moving forward. That's not great, being hit by your own missiles. Uh, the AC announcer audio call out for match over, you have won or lost the match, can be heard multiple times at the end of a round. Players can also spawn facing the wrong way at the start of a match or after dying and respawning. Uh, the Demon Fang combat knife asset is missing from the game as well. Boom! That's it for your Alpha 3.15 Wave 1 PTU notes. There's potentially some more coming to the patch. There's obviously going to be a lot of more bug fixes and uh, hopefully performance optimizations uh, to be made for this patch before it goes live. But I'm interested to know what you think. Are you playing in Wave 1 or waiting for it to go to open PTU or live? Do you like the updates here or were you expecting more meat uh, or something else? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Some people say I shill for NordVPN, but listen to some of these comments that I just made up. I've never fed the love of a woman before, but then I got NordVPN, and that didn't matter. Doctor said I'd never walk again, but then I got NordVPN. Now I've been running marathons. Also, I got robot legs around the same time. They might have helped somewhat too. 
Ah, I was a tone-deaf pirate, but after getting NordVPN, I'm able to play the saxophone. Go on, Zin, try and animate all of this. Click the links below to get NordVPN. It might lead you to a more fulfilling life, but more likely, it will just help protect you from the terrors of the internet. What ship are we giving away in October? It is one of the most exciting ships we've given away, and one of the most popular. It's the Argo Cargo. So many people liked it, we thought we'd give one away, instead of a Mercury Star Runner, or a Carrack, or something else. You can do fun things, like fly around a planet, or fly very slowly into the sun. And it also makes my top 16 ships that I liked in the ship showdown this year. Me and Zin are sort of on a holiday for a week, so we had to quickly film a ship giveaway, so we do have CitizenCon coming up, and we might have some other things going on on the channel that will make it worth your while commenting, so do what you want. I'm not your dad. You should definitely press the join button below my videos, though, and you should certainly like and subscribe and bell bother. Click on the bell. I don't know what it does, but it makes me money somehow. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Thanks very much for watching, though, and I'll see you in the next one.